This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now, another Proudly We Hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Quite an intriguing title to our story, Conrad, A Matter of Time. What's it all about? Well, it's not only an intriguing title, Ken, but an intriguing story, too. A science fiction drama with a surprise ending. Our first act curtain will rise in a few minutes after this very important message. I'd like to point out that every woman in the United States has a definite part in the stepped-up program of national defense. Young women between 18 and 34 who can qualify are urgently needed for service in the Women's Army Corps. You'll enjoy the gratifying feeling of satisfaction that comes in doing your part for your country during these critical times. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Talk to the local recruiter and learn all the facts. Volunteer today. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Mark Costain, Your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, A Matter of Time. Time, the riddle of the universe, the track on which the film of our lives passes. Time, a dream, a miracle. Time, like the strong flow of a river, moving, moving, but to where? to reach out and stop time. Yes, to stop it, chain it and tame it, and then turn it around and trace its course back through the ages. Such has been the dream of some men. But it took the genius of Dr. Philip Rutledge to make it more than a dream. Doctor, Dr. Rutledge, here's Mark Costain. Oh, Mark, it's good to see you. Uh, Wait just a moment while I shut this off. Well, Dr. Rutledge, good to see you, too. It's been a long time. Yes, I know, I know. One becomes absorbed in his work, and then suddenly it's five years later. Uh, Sit down, sit down. How about a drink? No, no, thank you. Ah, well, how's your work been going? I... I think I saw some of your photographs in the magazine not long ago. Oh, the series on the Belgian Congo? Yes, very good. You certainly have a talent. So graphic, so detailed. Oh, nothing to it, Doctor. You just look through a finder and take the picture. Uh, You're too modest, like your father was. Tell me, are you uh, still interested in anthropology as well? Well, you might call it a sideline or a hobby. My photographic work keeps me on the go. What are you up to now? Well, as a matter of fact, you called me between assignments. I've got a week to do nothing. Good. I uh, may have a very unusual assignment to offer you while you're doing nothing. That's a fine way to spend a vacation. Well, I think I can promise you a vacation like none you might have dreamed of. Hmm. Well, in that case, I'll be quiet and listen. Uh, 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 Two things you must realize now... uh, One, I'm not mad. No. And two, what I say is in strictest confidence. For a number of years now, I have been carrying on experiments in a field which science actually knows little about. They have been conducted on a plane far beyond anything. I think that explains it in brief. I haven't gone into detail because I'm sure your knowledge in the field is... Mm, is limited to the ticking of a clock. <laughs> well, be that as it may. It, uh... You know, it's not the simplest thing in the world to digest. 
Sounds like an H.G. Wells story. I know, I know. A century ago, if a big commercial airliner had flown over your head, you'd have thought yourself mad. The dreams of yesterday are the realities of today, especially in the world of science. Well, there's one thing I can't help wondering. Huh? Why have you told me all this? Not just because you and Dad were close friends. Certainly not. Well, if I'm able to accomplish what sounds like the impossible, I want to bring back proof. Mark, you're one of the best photographers in the country. You can supply the proof. Oh. Oh, you want me to go with you on this, this journey? I do. And if you'd rather not, I'll find someone else. Well, you, you realize it sounds fantastic. Of course. To go back into time. To see all that's gone by. To take pictures of events that, that... Can you imagine publishing a photograph of Napoleon after Waterloo? Of Caesar before the Roman Senate? Of, of... Uh, uh, it won't be quite like that. Oh. Well, how do you mean? Well, for 25 years, I've been at work on this project. I've overcome many obstacles, but there are some that still stand in the way. It'll only be one trip. And there'll be no way of knowing just what period of history we'll come to rest in. At the end of the trip, the forces that made it possible will be exhausted. And there can be no second journey. At least in my lifetime. Morley, my assistant, and his daughter Lisa will carry on my work. But even so, it will take them a quarter of a century to be ready to try it again. I see. One round trip ticket, that's all we get. Exactly. And to where, we don't know. We'll have to take our chances. Look, is there any chance that once having gone back into the past, we won't be able to return to the present? Well, there's always that chance, but I'm confident it's a small one. The principle is somewhat like a plane flying on a beam. With certain signals to guide it, the plane has no trouble following the beam to its destination. The same applies to us. Only in our case, there's no way of telling where the beam will end. However, when the time comes for us to return, the origination of our beam will be in the present. So it'll be just a matter of following it to its starting point. <laughs> you make it sound simple. When do you plan to start? Friday. It gives you three days to make up your mind. Hmm. I don't think I'll need that long. Oh. I see. Well, Mark, I'm sorry. You... I make up my mind very quickly, Doctor. I'll have to go back to town to get my equipment. Forgive me for misjudging you. Not many would listen to the tale of a madman and agree to accompany him into nowhere. <laughs> you needn't. I'm Lisa Morley. You're Mark Costain, right? Right. <laughs> Philip said you'd be coming out this morning, and as he's busy, he asked me to meet you. Well, that's very nice of you. And Dr. Rutledge, too. Well, why don't we sit down? That's a very good idea. Ah, so you're really going with us? Us? Well, yes, of course. Philip, Dad, and myself. Oh, oh. Well, I guess I'd been thinking of it in terms of just the doctor and myself. <laughs> don't be greedy. Look, we'll... Um, Will we be able to mix with the people of whatever time we go back to? Oh, we're not sure about that. Philip doesn't think so. He thinks we'll be something like spectators at a motion picture that will remain unseen to those around us. Yes, it might be a bit startling to whomever we pop in on if it was otherwise. <laughs> they'd hmm? probably burn us as witches. Oh, if they did that, they'd change history. I was only joking. Yes, I know. Yeah, but last night after I left here... You know, I couldn't go to sleep thinking about it. I thought, suppose we go back to, 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 well, any period. And suppose we did something to change history. What would happen then? Well, if Philip's right, and he usually is, there isn't much chance of it. We'll see it all, but we won't be able to be a part of it. It's very complicated, and it has to do with light rays, and I'm, I'm sure you'd be bored, silly, if I tried to explain. <laughs> you call him Philip. It's funny, I never could. Maybe because I've known him ever since I was a kid. Oh, I think he's the most remarkable man alive today, but I just can't be formal with anyone. And he likes me to call him Philip because it makes him feel younger. You and your father, have you been with him long? Mm, Dad for ten years and me for three. <laughs> 
You know, you certainly do not look like a scientist. No? What do I look like? Well, you look more like... A... There you are, Mark. I see you're in good company. The best, sir. He just told me I didn't look like a scientist. He's right. More like a flirt. Oh. Uh, Mark, this is George Morley, my very able assistant. How do you do, sir? Welcome to our happy little group. If we get back to the time of the Magna Carta... I want a dozen prints to pass around to the boys. <laughs> uh, Morley's a very dry fellow. And I'm a very dry girl. What do you say we drink to something? A most scientific suggestion. I'll gather the necessary chemicals, then we'll show Mark the time chart. As you can see, there'll be plenty of room for all of us. Yes, yes, yes. God, it looks like a big bubble. Well, the operation is very simple. At the moment of departure, when full power has been generated... But these, generated... these strange-looking contraptions, they do all that? As contraptions, they're quite wonderful and represent about 25 years of work. To mark their contraptions, that's clear enough. Now, this panel here will give us our indications. When they reach the point we're looking for, I'll throw this switch. And we'll be off on our broomstick and a flash of light. Magic. Magic. Better than that. One way or the other, we'll hope so. <laughs> What, what? Oh. Wake up, Mark. Time to get ready. Another cup of coffee, Lisa? Uh, no. No, thanks. You, Mark? Afraid I don't have much of an appetite all of a sudden. Turn on the dynamos, George. Right. Mark, you and Lisa might as well climb aboard. Sit in these two seats. Strap yourselves in. Make sure the harness is snug. Right. Get in, George. Start giving me the readings. 104 minus. 100 minus. Keep building fast, Philip. Good. Good, it checks. 85 minus. Starting to switch over. Beam coming in at 60 minus. Excellent. Now hold it steady. Now it won't be long now. No fluctuations. 20 minus. Maximum approaching. Stand by. At zero. Now! Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Mark Costain in the proudly we hail production, A Matter of Time, will return in just a moment for the second act. Your growing United States Army needs registered nurses. This is an opportunity for registered nurses to be of vital service to their country by offering their services to the Army Nurse Corps. You'll become a commissioned officer and have excellent opportunities to further your career. You'll have the benefit of working with the finest medical equipment in the world and you'll learn the newest professional techniques in anesthesia, operating room procedure, nursing administration, and many, many others. So get all the facts today. Do this by writing or wiring the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. I'll repeat that address. The Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Mark Costain, we present the second act of A Matter of Time. Oh, oh. oh my head. Dr. Rutledge. Dr. Rutledge, you all right? Is he? What? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what happened? I'm not sure yet. Here. Here, drink this. See to the others. See if they're all right. Miss Morley. Lisa. Lisa, you all right? What hit me? Here, drink this. I can't oh. see out. 
Wind is all fogged up. I'll rub this one off. Here. Try some of this, Morley. What do you see? We're in some kind of jungle. It looks prehistoric. Everybody all right now? Lisa? Fine. Well, then I guess we're ready to have a look around. I uh, don't think whatever life we find here will be able to observe us. Still, we must take precautions. Morley, you and I will carry the rifles. These are you take one pack, mark the others. Won't hinder your work, will it, Mark? No, not a bit. Is there... Is there any way of knowing how far back we've come? Well, that instrument there that looks like a recorder will give us the answer, but not until we get back to the present. Now, one thing is vital. Under no circumstances must we separate. We have exactly 24 hours to make our observations. Any questions? Good. Then let's be on our way. I don't think we'd better go far, Philip. It's awfully thick. Morley, we'll try to collect as many different specimens as we can. Be sure to stay close to the machine. It'll be dark soon. Before the light gets too bad. I want to look through there. I won't go far, but... Uh... Look in the sky! Those birds! Get them, Mark! Fantastic! Idiots like huge bats. They certainly move fast enough. Well... I'll see you all a little later. Don't go too far, Mark. I'll go along with him to make sure he doesn't. <laughs> all right. But watch your step. Even though it appears we can't be seen, we don't want to stumble into anything. Yeah, uh. Take this compass. Hey, haven't you noticed? Compasses don't work in this never-never land. <laughs> Hadn't we better be starting back? Yeah, in a minute, in a minute. Let's just sit down here and see what happens. I'm taking a lot of pictures. Yes, all I can. They should certainly create some sort of sensation. Yeah, there's, there's something terrifying about it all. I, I feel like screaming. Are we really sitting in a prehistoric jungle that grew 50,000 years well, ago? Don't you think it would have been just as frightening to have found ourselves in a more civilized time, say, the golden age of Greece? Oh, no, they were people. Not much different from ourselves, really. It would have been thrilling to have found ourselves in any age but, but this. If we came upon men, they'd be something like these awful animals trying to tear each other to bits. Yes, I must admit, it isn't quite what I expected. Gives you the creeps, all right. Philip said that you're quite an authority on anthropology. Have you any idea what age this really is? No. No, Lisa, I haven't. It's baffling. I guess it shows how little we really know about prehistoric times. Because, frankly, I haven't seen anything that I recognize as having existed in all the ages that I've ever studied. I can't understand it. Who ever heard of a jungle that was quiet after dark? It's an eerie kind of quiet, like... like it's waiting. Ah, if only we hadn't come back so far. You've accomplished the impossible. You mustn't feel badly, old man. One time's as good as another. Even with the specimens you've collected and the pictures I've taken, I'll wager you won't find many who will believe us. Let them think what they want. We'll have the proof. You said we had to leave before 24 hours were up. Why is that? The beam we traveled on will start fading then. We'll fade rapidly at its source, and the more it fades, the farther we'll be from the present. If we left a second late, we wouldn't get all the way back. And if we don't get back, we'll be lost in a kind of time vacuum all the rest of our lives. Like ghosts who can see but can't be seen. <gasps> what in the name? What was it? I don't know. It didn't sound like an animal cry to me. It sounded... Human. Looks like I go with you, Mark. Lucky man. I always get the short straw. You and I will hold down the fort, Dad. 
Shoo the dinosaurs away. All right, to be on the safe side, I think we should return to our starting point at the 23rd hour of our stay. And that leaves us a total of six hours in which to do our exploring. However, to be on the safe side, we'll make it five. If we're not back here by 10 o'clock, start sending up those flares. If we should run into trouble, we'll do the same. Please don't run into any, and, and please don't get lost. Well, Doctor, what do you make of it? I don't know. I, I just can't believe. But they look like ruins, man-made. If only we had more time, we could try and get a better look at them. Ah, too overgrown. It doesn't make sense, Mark. No. No, none of it seems to. But our knowledge of these times Mark, isn't... there by that clump of bushes. What? No, it can't be. Get pictures, quick. There are three of them. No, four. Move closer. There. There they go. Hurry. Watch that ditch. Oh! Dr. Rutledge! Never mind me. Go on after them. No. No, I could never catch them anyway. They ran faster than we could. Doctor, are you hurt? I twisted my ankle. Here, let's have a look. Did you get any pictures? Yes. But I don't know whether I'll believe them myself. They couldn't have been any more than three feet high. And they were human beings of some sort. Mark, put me down. We can never make it this way. We're almost there. Are you sure of your directions? Yes. I marked the trail when we came out. Mark. Oh, over there, they started shooting up flares. Molly! Molly! Lisa! Mark! Rocky! Where are you? Watch the flare! You don't remember the jungle being so thick here? We're coming! Keep shooting them! Lisa, take the controls. I'm almost gone. Uh, we'll get him strapped in first. Close the port. Get on the gadgets, Morley. I'll take care of Rutledge. Should have left me. Maybe too late. I'm ready for the readings. Coming in minus 200. Oh, Lord, if it doesn't build fast. Minus 180. Nothing on the screen. In the port, Lisa. Hi. Uh, are we in time? Yes. Right back where we started from. Oh, thank heaven. Thank heaven. Yes. We got to get a doctor for Rutledge quick. He's in bad shape. Here. Give me a hand. Yes, yes. Come in. You're finished? Yes. Completely. What's the matter? I've been using a camera for a long time now. Look! Why, they're blind! That's right. Every single one of them. Not one picture. But, nothing. But why? What happened? I... I don't know, Lisa. May have had to do with, well, with light rays. You understand that sort of thing better than I do. Well, at least we've got the specimens you collected. No. No, we don't, Mark. In the confusion and the hurry, they were left behind. Oh, no. Yes. Oh. Well, <laughs> poetic justice, I guess. How's Dr. Rutledge? I came to tell you he wants to see you right away. The doctor says it's, it's only a matter of time. Oh, it was no. too much of a strain. Well, wait here for me. Uh, 
that you, Mark? Yes. Yes, Dr. Rutledge. I'm glad you came. The pictures, you've developed them? Dr. Rutledge, I, uh, well, they didn't come out, Doctor. Any of them. Yes, I didn't think they would. I'm glad. Glad? Glad, I've but you... I've got to tell you something. Isn't much time. Only you and Morley will ever know. I wouldn't tell Lisa. We made an error. At least I did. We thought we went back. You said maybe 50,000 years. Well, well, that was just a guess. There's no way of knowing for sure, but uh, our calibrations indicate something quite different. Well... Does it really make any difference, Dr. Rutledge? Yes. Never tell a soul, Mark. It wasn't 50,000 years into the past we traveled, but 5,000 years into the future. Star Conrad Nagel will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Here's an opportunity for young women who are dietitians, physical therapists, or occupational therapists. It's a chance for advancement and to be of service to your country. Find out about the opportunities that can be yours by volunteering in the Women's Medical Specialist Corps. Write or wire the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C., today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Friends, we hope you'll join us next week over this same station for Proudly We Hail for a tale of the Orient entitled Passage to Bombay, a most mysterious story with some very mysterious people. Until then, goodbye.